community uprooted in this weekend's storm. I'm Sam Baranowski, surveying the damage live from Aldama Hall Union Ridge Road. Shaw University was hit hard by the tornado that struck Raleigh, and now the school is closed for the rest of the year. We'll have the story next on Phoenix 14. A student arrested for trespassing in Loy Center. Plus, an off-campus drug bust. Wild weather and two Elon students are personally affected by the tornado damage. Football player Aaron Millett is from Sanford, North Carolina and is now home helping his family rebuild. Gayla Carr from Clinton, North Carolina sent these pictures to Phoenix 14 News of damage in her community. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Carr joins us in the studio and will share her story with us in a moment. Team 14 coverage of damage and relief efforts begin tonight. Sam Baranowski and Sophie nielsen Colding are just 15 minutes north of Elon's campus where the community is still recovering from damage from Saturday's tornado. North Carolina State Capitol was also hit hard, forcing local Shaw University to close for the semester. David Hodges is following that story and Nick Oxner is wrapping up with relief efforts in the state. Tonight we have junior Gayla Carr in the studio who lives in North Clinton, North Carolina, where tornado devastation took place in her own neighborhood. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I understand that you received a phone call from your little brother. Tell us a little bit about that and how you found out about the damage. He had been trying to contact me all morning and I had decided to sleep in, but uh, he called me and let me know that he was across town at my grandparents' house when the storm hit, but once he went home, he saw that most of our street was completely destroyed and our neighbors had actually lost their houses. What about your house? My house was only slightly damaged, um, but we are already in the process of rebuilding. So how far away, for those who don't know, is Clinton from, from Elon? It's about three hours southeast of here. Describe to us, if you can, um, exactly uh, what students can do. I understand there is no Red Cross um, in your area if they would like to help donate for anything uh, to you or your family in your neighborhood. This week, um, Kappa Delta Sorority will be accepting canned foods and other non-perishable items um, to donate to a local church, which is ac actually acting as a shelter um, for Sampson County, and I will be delivering those this weekend over Easter break. And then um, the Carnoodle Center will be partnering with the American Red Cross for monetary donations. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the set with us today, and I wish you the best with your family and your recovery. Thank you. A local community north of Elon is also seriously affected by Saturday's storms. Sam Baranowski is in Altima Hall with more. Oh, uh, well, for a little bit there, my heart was thumping. Saturday's storm left the Jones family's yard populated with trees. Jonathan was alone in his house when the storm hit. He hid in the closet for cover, and when he finally came outside, he was shocked. A couple of thuds, but I didn't know this happened. The wind was so loud, he couldn't really hear any trees fall or anything. Five houses were destroyed on his street and nearly 20 have damage from fallen trees. The worst of the storm lasted about 30 minutes, but this community says it could take weeks to clean up. And Jonathan is just getting started. The day before this happened, I was grounded until I picked up the yard with sticks on it. <laughs> so this is your job now? Yep. You're looking at live video of another house where the entire garage was torn off. The community says it's going to take weeks to clean all of this up. We're sorry about having technical difficulties, but we'll get this information back to you as soon as we can. The storm also hit hard in our state capital. Check out this time-lapse footage from Raleigh. You have lightning, you have thunder. And then the clouds roll in. You can see the rain fierce and pounding the city. The storm is being blamed for at least 23 deaths statewide and for spawning 90 possible tornadoes. Just for comparison, North Carolina normally gets about 19 tornadoes a year, according to the National Climatic Data Center. The storm just missed Elon's campus. Students were instructed, however, to take cover as a precaution and heavy winds and rain caused cause some flooding. Tornadoes hit hard at Shaw University, causing heavy damage. David Hodges is live in Raleigh. David, what will happen to Shaw students? We gotta switch it to you. Nope. Yep. Go, go. 
here downtown city workers have moved debris and off the side of the road and put it behind barricades for traffic but just a block away at shaw university the damage is too much to sweep to the side the president has ordered the school closed for the rest of the year like a freight train glass was breaking we've been running i just wanted to get, wanted to get into the bathroom balled up crying screaming it was, it was scary. The storm that hit Raleigh sent students at Shaw seeking safety. Many were in their dorm rooms watching the tornado, but eventually had to flee from the windows. And the wind started blowing real hard. The glass came in. That's when we ran out to the hallway. When the storm was over, no students were hurt, but they emerged to find their campus shattered. The roof of a building ripped off. Windows broken and debris everywhere. Can't even walk anywhere without stepping on a glass. I cut my foot like four times. A storm so devastating that the president of the university suspended school for the rest of the year. The tornado was so strong it tore the roots of this tree right out of the ground. And behind where the tree fell, the dormitories of Shaw University, where students are now moving out. <laughs> With school closed for the last two and a half weeks, students are headed home, but some aren't ready to leave. Even if we can't finish our grades, I still would like to talk to my teacher. So, you know, you just can't leave people hanging like that. That's not right. I'm happy. At the same time, I'm sad because I ain't ready to leave my friends just yet. But others see no choice. Even though they could have handled the situation better, that's all they could do. I was walking around campus yesterday, and when you see all the destruction, it's hard to imagine how they can carry on with school. There's several buildings flooded. Most of the students' dorm room windows are boarded up. And, you know, most of the students left yesterday, but on Saturday night when they still were at school and they didn't know it was closed yet, many whose dorms were too damaged to stay in were put up at Southeast Raleigh High School. Most have gone home now, but they're looking forward to coming back to school next year. There's obviously a lot of reparations that will need to happen between now and then at Shaw University. Live in Raleigh, David Hodges, Phoenix 14 News. The effects of the storm on Shaw University raised the questions of Elon's storm preparedness. Students were alerted to the storms with text alerts, emails, and the emergency siren. Don Grenies has more on Elon's emergency response plan. First there was, the response was, and, as well as, this weekend's strong storms put the campus emergency alert system to the test. When the storms hit Elon, the entire campus was aware of the threat. See, like, the carnage that this storm is taking. But not all students knew how to respond. What was that noise? Was it like the wind? And I was like, no, that's the siren. As the emergency siren signaled a tornado threat, Rosie Tochik, an RA in Moffitt, It's very important to walk, not run downstairs. knew she had to get her residents down the stairs to the bottom floor. I made sure that all of my students, you know, were aware that this is a tornado warning, this is very serious. The Hardin Dining Hall was the safest place for them to go. Make sure that you stay away from windows, lock your doors, and away from anything that could possibly fall off the wall and hit you if there is an emergency. In the case of a severe weather emergency, students are advised to go to the center of their buildings, which would include the bathroom. One of the safest places in the bathroom is right here in the shower. My wife and I go into our laundry room. We actually then, what I would do is I would take some cushions from the couch and put it over the top of us. Elon Provost Stephen House thinks that each student on campus should have their own plan to react in an emergency situation. The thing is to get away from windows, get into the center of the building on the lowest floor possible. Before students take cover, they need to know what the threat consists of. One of the biggest uh, challenges we've had is to find out the ways to get the word out. And, you know, we know there's not one way to get the word out. We have to do it in lots of ways. Last week's tornado threat confused some students when a technological glitch left them without an alert. This weekend, it seemed as though the message was received. In the future, students might be better informed as to how to react to an emergency situation. Don Grenice, Phoenix 14 News Tonight. In the case of a campus-wide evacuation, the Mosley Center has backup generators and supplies. Buses would be provided to bring people to safety. More information can be found on the Elon website at emergency.elon.edu. 
Elon is still drying out from the weekend. Storms, the football stadium, and the intramural fields filled with water due to heavy rain. Belk Library dealt with leaks and put out tarps and buckets. And physical plant worked to clear the Alpha Omicron Pi on campus sorority house after flooding. Campus Rec, Octagon, and Colonnades Dining also experienced some leakage. Physical plant says there is no lasting damage from the storm. Tonight on Crime Watch. Two Elon students are recovering after a fight at West End Thursday night. Freshman Brian Sullivan was knocked unconscious outside of Subway on Lebanon Avenue by Thomas Saplett, who is not an Elon student. Witnesses say the suspect fled the scene but were able to read the license plate before he left. Police were able to locate the vehicle and found the suspect sitting on a curb near New Trollinger. Saplett admitted to hitting the two students and was taken to the Alamance County Jail. He was placed under $12,000 secure bond. Sullivan was taken to the Alamance Regional Medical Center where he was seen by doctors. An Elon student was arrested this morning after vandalizing the Acorn Inn. Elon police confirmed Brian Hong's arrest. According to a fire department official, Hong was destroying property and threw three chairs off the patio at the Acorn Inn. Eyewitnesses reports claim that Hong fled the scene and was arrested and pepper sprayed. Hong was released on a $500 bond. Two Elon students faced drug charges after a bust last week on Manning Avenue. Elon Town Police arrested James Matthew Shoemaker and Matthew Lowe Thursday. Police found nearly 30 grams of marijuana in the house and drug paraphernalia. The men faced six drug-related charges, including possession with intent to sell and deliver controlled substances, possession of marijuana, and manufacturing a controlled substance. Coming up on Phoenix 14 News. A student arrested for trespassing on campus. We'll have that story for you next. The spring football game was canceled this weekend, but another event brought a big crowd to the new alumni field house on Saturday. Find out what it was later in sports. Now a story you'll see first on 14. Trespassing in the Greek courts led to a student being arrested. Brandon Marshall joins us with more. Brandon? Brandon Huggins was arrested for several criminal charges. One of the ch charges was second degree trespassing. Since his arrest, I wanted to ask Elon students what they thought about a policy which allows arrests on campus for trespassing. Elon freshman Brandon Huggins was arrested on April 3rd for underage consumption of alcohol, drunk and disruptive order, and second-degree trespassing. The arrest occurred around 2 a.m. in Lloyd Center. Chief Gantos of Campus Safety and Police says some students told Huggins to leave the area twice before they called campus police. There were some activities at the Greek court, and uh, as a result of those activities, the officer, officers tried to apprehend Brandon. He took off running, was pursued by the police officers, and then so charged. Gantos went on to say despite Huggins being an Elon student and on school grounds, the trespassing charge was still standard procedure. So once you've been told not to do something or not to be somewhere, if you continue to come back or continue to do it, it can be a second degree charge. The university official was unable to give a specific policy on arresting students for trespassing on their own campus. He spoke to several students today who thought the university should protect students from charges like these. Being an Elon student, the fact that this is university campus, this is, this is school grounds that students should have the right to go wherever they want. He's just on campus, just walking around. Even if he was drunk, it's not trespassing. We pay tuition, so this is also our property too. I mean, I guess technically we're trespassing right now, walking yeah. on the sidewalk because this is Elon's campus. So I disagree. Now Huggins was taken to Alamance County Jail, where he continued to resist officers and a detention officer. He was tased and later charged with resisting an officer in jail. Huggins was released on a $1,600 bond and had a court appearance last week. For more developments on this story, you can check out our blog at phoenix14news.wordpress.com. Brandon Marshall, Phoenix 14 News, tonight. 